Hello, and welcome to another episode of Nerd Leading the Nerd. I am Seth. And I'm Drew, and today we're covering the best D&D movie ever? That's right, we are covering The Gamers, Dorkness Rising, and Seth, how did we find this gem? So a very good friend of mine suggested this film. This movie debuted at the 2008 Gen Con, and Dead Gentleman production is very big in the tabletop role-playing community. So we decided, let's check this movie out. So this movie is about a group of friends who are tabletop role-playing gamers. They have a reoccurring game, a campaign, if you will, and the DM takes it very seriously he's writing this like homebrew game players are just always trying to like screw with him and like break his game we get into this campaign with the group going in and out of real life versus in the game so obviously this is about D&D let's let's take that aspect out of it because we both enjoy tabletop role playing games let's break this down as we would just a, a regular film that you would normally see are you cool with that Seth? Yeah let's do it a couple of things that I have is like main sticking points the film quality Seth how would you describe it? I would describe this as a student film. If you and I were in film school and it was our freshman year and we decided we wanted to make a movie about D&D, this would be the result of that. I agree. I also feel that this has kind of a sci-fi channel original in the 90s kind of vibe. Maybe Adult Swim. Like, I feel like this would have a good place. Maybe midnight to 3 a.m. slot. Okay, so film quality aside, let's talk about the acting. I think, as Seth said, it's giving film school vibes, but I don't know if it's a part of the comedy. I felt like they were doing too much in moments, and I, for some it was comedy, and for others it was just a little awkward. What are your thoughts on that? I felt like they were just figuring it out as they went. I feel like they shot this in sequence. So at the beginning of the movie, it was yeah. like day one of shooting, and it was a little awkward. As the movie went along, I felt like the acting got better and better, and maybe I just fell in love with the characters and the story, but I felt like it got better as the movie progressed. There were some odd things that happened, I less enjoyed watching the regular people and I enjoyed more of the gameplay aspect. Of course, we would be remiss to not cover special effects because there are some in this movie. I read that they started shooting in 2005. So if you put it into context, the special <laughs> yeah. effects of 2005, I was impressed, you know? Once I found that out, I was like, all right, cool. This makes sense and I like it. Obviously, any good movie needs a, a good story. I feel like there's two stories in this and they're, they're kind of fighting each other through most of the movie. And then it does sort of culminate at the end in a positive way, but it does feel like there could have been more subtlety to it to bring it all together. How did you feel about the story overall? I think you have to bring the D&D &D aspect back into it when you start talking about the story because I mm. think, yeah, the love story was whatever. Where I start to relate to the story is the yin and the yang of being the DM versus being the player. And you had the DM who wrote this story that he felt like was this big epic tale and then his players are basically there to just ruin his story and fight him like every step of the way. From that regard, I really enjoyed the story. It was just the relatability of playing Dungeons and Dragons. Well, and that kind of leads us well into the next idea that we want to talk about. Like, obviously, this is a D&D movie, and it is, as many would say, the most realistic representation of the game Dungeons and Dragons. I see all the ideas that come off, you know, you're always going to have the members of the party that they don't really take anything seriously. You know what I mean? Like, there's the, the bard character clearly knows nothing about the characteristic of being a bard and is constantly reminded by the DM, which I thought was hilarious. The fact that the bard continued to die over and over again was pretty amazing. I will say that when I run games, I have this idea in my head that it's going to be like Lord of the Rings, but it always ends up being more like Monty Python and the Holy Grail, <laughs> you know? So I can relate a little bit with what this yeah. DM is going through. One thing I really liked about this movie is just how well it represented playing a game of D&D. &D. We all know that the D&D &D big blockbuster film came out just a few months ago. And while it did have a few nods and some things to actually playing and people who have played the game would pick up on that and they did, I think that this movie better represents actual gameplay. The big blockbuster movie missed an opportunity. I think they could have like cut out of the world and had some people around a table and showed people playing 
playing the game and then zoomed back in to the actual theatrical like epic movie but they didn't yeah. do that at all and i think that's what makes this a better D, D movie they represented playing the game better than the big budget film that came out you know at the beginning of the summer i couldn't agree more and i do understand you know these big studios they get these properties they need to make it for everyone and that is a great movie for everyone but if you are a person that is hesitant about starting to play D, &D and you really want to know what it's actually like we solved your problem go on youtube go to the link in the description below and watch this film i think it's a wonderful representation that's what made me fall in love with this movie i love b movies dude you know this about me and this could not be anything else but a b movie i know we may have been a little bit negative in the beginning but i enjoy the weird film quality i like the awkward conversations that they have that the dialogue's clunky there's a moment in the movie at the very end where two of the main characters are talking to each other and the guy who plays the dm essentially reaches his hand over to like steady himself on the rack of stuff that's behind him and he kind of misses i immediately caught that and i loved it because that's the little stuff that in big movies you would do another take and that would end up on the blooper reel but in this they were totally fine with it and i like that stuff i like the bad and the good it has to be so bad that it's good and so good that it's bad if that makes any sense it makes a lot of sense so you guys tell us have you seen dorkness rising did you like it do you think it's the best D, &D movie ever made and if not that's okay too leave us a comment let us know what you think and while you're at it please consider subscribing to the channel Hit that like button, hit the bell icon so you guys never miss an upload. And don't forget to come back soon. Because we'll be waiting. I'm sure you're all aware that there is a writers and actors strike that's going on currently. Just as a little PSA, we're not covering any new projects. We're trying to do things a little bit different. Maybe bring new light to some independent movies that you may not have heard of and that you may enjoy. I hope you don't mind us changing things up just for a little bit while we stand in solidarity with the writers and actors out there.